Hey y'all, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanted to film the video kind of playing with the most expensive items I have in my makeup collection. And this was inspired by a gift from a very dear friend of mine. She gifted me the Clay de Peau, the foundation with SPF 21. This little beautiful package, beautifully packaged foundation retails for $335 here in Canada. That's expensive. And um, now that I have it, let's see if it's worth it, if it's worth the exuberant cost that it has. So to go along with this, we're going to try out the most expensive products from my collection with the exception of a concealer that I've got it's just because it's new and I want to play with it. And um, I've already prepped my skin using my Tatcha Kisu Lip Mask and the Super Goop Glow Screen. The foundation is a little too dark for me, so I thought since this is a little too dark for me as well, it might make my neck match a little bit better. So that is that. Oh. Let's open this up. I have already removed the kind of protective cover over it and it looks like this. So it is in a jar packaging. So I like to use like little scoops because I don't want to get my fingers in it because our fingers have germs. So you can see, I might be able to make this work. It depends on how much coverage it has, but staying like normal, I'm just gonna kind of dot it around my skin. And then I'll use a brush and a sponge to blend it out. And if I need to, I can take it on my neck. I use this little Morphe 2 brush. It's blending out really nicely. And this brush, this is one of those Morphe 2 brushes from the little collection that Sephora has. And I really like this brush for just kind of smoothing out product. Let's see, let me check my mirror. Hmm. It looks, it looks like skin. Wow. This This looks really, really nice. So I have one layer on. I feel like I have a solid kind of light coverage, but that looks like skin. This looks like really pretty skin. Um, there's a little bit left in the spatula. So I'm just gonna get that out on my finger. And I want a little bit more coverage right here, right here, a little bit on my chin. Wipe off my finger and I'll pick up what's left on the back of my hand with a brush. And I'm gonna try to stipple that in so I can see if I get a little bit more coverage. Yeah. As it's kind of warming up and oxidizing on my skin, it's definitely too dark. I'm gonna need to take this down my neck. I do feel like this color though, like going into summer when I use a fake tan, this might look really, really nice. <laughs> um, I also decided to kind of offset the tone of this video by wearing one of my affordable obsessions. And it's these like sweatshirts. Um, I have them in like five or six different colors. They're from the Amazon Basics range or Amazon Essentials, Amazon's house brand of clothing. And they're around $20 a piece here in Canada. I really love them and they're comfy. Okay, that's nice. That looks really nice. Let me come a little bit closer so you can see it again. It just looks like real skin. I'm, I'm impressed. I'll have to see how it wears. Um, it has a tiny bit of a fragrance. It's almost like a, it's like a floral scented SPF. So I can smell it on my hand where I applied the product, but I can't smell it on my face. So see if that pops back up because sometimes fragrances and products, they can kind of dissipate, but then they can come back. Um, for concealer, I'm going to try this out. This is the Kosas Revealer Concealer and I have shade 2.5C. I was thinking this looked lighter 
than the foundation, slightly more yellow. So I could use it around various parts of my face to kind of lighten up the O over look. So kind of like highlighting. Might apply too much. We'll have to see how this blends. It's fun. I don't think I've done this type of look where I just kind of play with new products. Because normally like when I do my foundation reviews, I'll try it for a few days off camera, come in and show you the final day and give you a review over what I noticed. But today, we're doing a full-on first impression. Wow. This is blending like butter. Look really nice layered together, so I like that. I am going to use a dry beauty sponge just to lift off any of the superficial product. And that's something I always like to do just to kind of see or help extend the wear. And this like little trick where you just use a dry sponge to kind of press over, it's really good, especially if you're using products that are more emollient or that have a little bit more richness than typical. Cause like for me, I do have normal to oily skin and the foundation does feel a little too rich for my skin, but using that dry beauty sponge can kind of help lift off some of that excess moisture to kind of make the skin feel a little less heavy. I'm gonna now powder, and oh, that was a struggle to open. I'm gonna be using the Pat McGrath Blurring Under Eye Powder, and I'm gonna apply that with a Refer 04 brush. So I just like to take a little bit Dot it on, I'll take it over my eyelid so a shadow we're gonna play with later has something to kind of stick to. And then I'll just take a little bit more on my brush, tap it off, and use that to kind of do a gentle sweep under and over. Because where we tapped and pressed that powder in, you might have a little bit extra stain on top, but having a little bit of powder on the brush and then using it to kind of flick over the area, you're gonna wipe off any of that excess powder so the skin doesn't look heavy. For the rest of the face to powder, I am gonna be using the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Powder, and this is just the original clear shade. And if you've never used this powder before, you need a tiny bit. So there's a little bit in the lid. This might be enough for the whole face. You can see it's so fine, it kind of creates like a little smoke cloud but I'm gonna use that just to kind of start by mattifying areas. And then let's kind of tap over. And I really like this powder because it does a really nice job at smoothing the look of the skin. It helps to add powder, so your powder highlight, blush, bronzer, whatever you wanna use on top is gonna to blend a little bit easier, but it's not going to stick. And this powder is also great for people who have dry skin because it's gonna help pull in a little bit of moisture. Um, just make sure you've done your work and properly prepped your skin before you apply your makeup. The Clay de Peau Highlighter. Looks like this. I bought this right before I left Nordstrom and I haven't used it a lot. Um, I've used, I've definitely used it a handful of times, but I, I don't know, this is either like 120 or 125, might be more. Um, clay de Peau, it's expensive. And for the price, it's not my favorite, but who knows, maybe today I will enjoy it more than normal. And this is just one of the it for Ulta, Love is the Beauty, number 223 highlighting brushes. So like in my other videos, I like to highlight before I do anything else, because this will kind of help add a little bit of light to the skin. This is nice, like it adds a little bit of luminosity. Actually, it's very subtle. I do see a little bit of emphasis of texture right through here. It's not crazy, but it's, I don't know. For the price of this, I want perfection. Um, 
if you've got less textured skin or you're, you have smaller pores than I do, you might really like this. Um, comes in several different shades. It's it's nice. It's not a bad powder. It's just, in my opinion, too expensive for what it is. We'll be using the Gucci bronzer in Zero One Fair. Looks like this. Let's use the BK Beauty 103 brush. Since this foundation is darker, I'm gonna mostly just kind of keep the bronzer on the perimeter of my face, a little bit through the hairline, and then I'm gonna take a little bit extra on my ears and on my neck, just to make sure everything's kind of blending together. This is my newest Charlotte Tilbury blush. This is in the shade Love Glow. Jane Iredell. What is this? This is a chiseled powder brush. And you're supposed to, with the Charlotte blushes, they're kind of intended to use the perimeter color across the cheek and then the kind of center shade to pop the apple of the cheek. So you can do that. I personally just mix the two shades together and then apply. Look, it's very kind of like spring inspired. It's got those warm kind of peachy tones. You've got the kind of skin that's slightly warmer than normal. So I don't want to add too much blush because I don't want this look to become very blush centric. I just kind of want the blush to kind of fade into the background of the overall look to create effect because that's what we're going for here. I want to play with the eyes a little bit and make them one of the more dramatic focal points of the look but I don't want the rest of the skin to overpower. And that's why I'm doing kind of blush and everything now because they're, I just want them to play in harmony with my skin and I don't need to worry too much about them competing with the rest of the look. For eyes, we are gonna be playing with this Chanel quad and it is in number 226 Tis Rivoli. I, my French is horrible. I took French in high school, but I remember none of it. Um, the color palette though looks like this. So it's a little bit more neutral, but these neutrals have like a slightly kind of pinky and plummy tone. So we are gonna play with those. A Ruffer 01 brush. And I'm gonna go into, hmm, I'm gonna go into this shade right here. So the second to lightest shade. And I'm just gonna pick that up on the side of the brush. So get a little bit on. Top off any excess, start at the lash line. I'm gonna use the mirror and the palette. And I'm just gonna swipe this all over the eyelid. And I'm gonna take it just above the natural kind of socket of my eye. And for this look, I did not use an eye primer because one, I wanna see how these shadows wear on their own. But also, my eyelids naturally have kind of like a more ready purple tone than the rest of my eyes. So with the color palette that is in this quad, I felt like the natural coloring of my eye would play really well with the kind of look I had in mind. There we go. I mean, even though the eyes are gonna have a little bit more drama, compared to the rest of the look, it's still gonna not gonna be crazy because this is me we're talking about. I don't get really crazy. Yeah, I don't mind that, I really like that. I wanna add something a little bit darker. So I'm gonna use a BK Beauty number 201 brush. And I am gonna go in with I'm gonna go on with this shade. So it's the second to darkest shade. This I'm gonna pick up a little bit on the tip of my brush. And I kind of wanna, I don't wanna take this into my crease too much, but I wanna add some color on the outside corner. So I'm gonna kind of place the brush, hug it, let it kind of grip on, and I'm gonna pull an angle towards the center of my eye. So at first you'll notice more color kind of being deposited, but where you're kind of essentially kind of like flicking the color on, it will be a little bit easier to blend out. So I am just going to, let me show you what I'm using. I'm using the Artiste brush cleaning pad 
and I just like to gently kind of swirl my brush on to take off any of the excess product. And it honestly removed most of the product from this brush, which is even better because it's gonna help us blend. So I'm just gonna take my time and really blend. And kind of, you can work it slightly into the socket, slightly into the lash line, and you can blend out this way, but be mindful how far you blend out because the more you blend out, the slightly more dramatic you're gonna make the look. So I'm keeping it pretty close to where I applied it. And I'm letting the bristles kind of disperse the product for me. When you're making these like little buffing motions, they are not large circles. So we're not making these big motions. You'll notice it's almost like a tight, small, circular scrubbing motion. I'm gonna go back in with that first brush, which still has the first color we applied. And I'm gonna take that and just use that to slightly buff over the edge of that color. And that's why we took the shade a little bit above the socket line. If you need to, you can pick up a little bit more, tap off the excess and use it just to go on those edges to help blend it in. And this is an almost create a new shade as well which will help give you that transitioned look. And same thing on the other side. And at this point, if you want to, you can take a little bit under the eye. This is a rougher number 13 brush, it looks like this. And I'm gonna go in with the lightest shade in the palette. My brow bone is heavier, so I don't wanna add too much light. Because if I add a lot of light to this area right here, you're gonna make it come forward, which is make the eye look heavier. So what I'm gonna do is just with this lightest shade, before I fill in my eyebrows. I'm gonna hug it right here at the arch of my brow. When you do your brows, this will cover up some of the highlight. So that way you're adding light there, but you're not adding a lot of impact. It's just creating a more co cohesive look. A little bit more of that shade. Brighten up that inner corner a little bit. Just a little bit of light. Now what I wanna do to kind of help soften this look even more I am going to go in with a little bit of powder, and I'm using the Sisley Loose Powder, and you are just going to pick up a tiny bit. Biggest con with this powder is it gets messy. But this shade, it's slightly, slightly brighter than the foundation I have on, and it has a little bit of a light reflecting property, so that's going to make it easier to blend. So... With the powder, I'm gonna buff on the edge. And that's gonna help blend into that highlight color we applied. But it's also gonna take off any harsh edges. And you just wanna blend until you are happy with the intensity that you have. And there we go. So I wanna keep my intensity here. But as it blends out, I want it to stop. Like I want it to almost look like it just fades into the skin. So a little bit of powder, place it on the edge, and then buff. I like to start on the edge because that way most of this powder that you're using is going to almost, it's gonna diffuse the edge, slightly erase it, but it's gonna help pull it out. And that, kind of pulling the pigment out is going to help it fade into the skin, creating a smoky effect that is definitely smoky, but it's going to have a slightly more kind of natural finish. There you go. And you can keep doing that until you're content with it, but I'm going to buff all over my face. And when I buff my face, I get a little bit of that powder near my eye area, which is just gonna help with the overall look. So to buff, let's see, I'm gonna use the BK Beauty 102 brush. And there's already some powder in the lid. So I like to place my brush in, swirl it around, you'll notice some kick up, tap off the excess, and then you're gonna use that powder lightly to start by stippling all over your skin. 
You can take it over the eyelids if you want to. Pick up a little bit more, just whatever's left over in your cap, and then you're gonna buff over the skin. And then when you're buffing on this edge, you're using very, very light pressure. And you can buff over that outer edge of the shadow. And that's gonna help kind of diffuse the look a little bit more. Because now you're essentially pulling the edge of that shadow into the rest of the overall complexion. Easy, and now everything just kind of fades in together. So what we're gonna do next, I don't think I'm gonna do anything else in the lower lash line. I'm gonna use a little bit of the Dior Show Iconic Mascara in Chestnut Brown. And I'm just gonna coat the top lashes. And you can add as much mascara as you want. I don't want this to be a lash dominant look, so I'm just gonna apply a thin coat to my top lashes. A little bit of settling already. Just on my right side of my face, I didn't think about that. But it's blending out very easily, and that's the only place I noticed the foundation migrated. So that will be something to check on, and I will, hopefully I remember to check in later. <laughs> but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a clean brush. This is the It Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe number seven brush, and I'm just gonna smooth over that edge one more time. And then I'm gonna run this clean brush just over any areas I'm prone to settling. So for me, I settle a little bit here and I can settle a little bit through here. Picking up a superficial amount of product from your skin and that's product that could settle and crease later on in the day. The Dior, uh, what is this? Plump and Brow in 011. And I like this because it has such a small little brush and you just kind of squeeze, pull out the product, and comb through your brows. I find this product doesn't have a ton of hold, but it adds just enough product to tint the brow. So it creates a slightly fuller appearance, which is great when you want more of like a laid back appearance. And if you get any product that comes off in a little blob like I did right here. You can just lightly brush over. And let that set for a second. Give, your mo give yourself a moment to kind of like adjust to how it looks. So I like to take a clean spoolie brush and first I'll coat through my lashes. And this just removes anything that's kind of clumping together or wanting to stick together. Removes any little bobbles from the tips of the lashes, and then I will brush through my brows. And you know what? I'll add a tiny bit of product right there. Spot right here, I'm gonna use the Dior Show Brow Styler, and I'm using 002 Dark Brown. If I'm working in the front of my brow, I use the Light Brown or their universal shade, but for out here where I like a little bit more depth, I'll use a slightly darker color to fill in just that outside part of the brow. And then since I added a little bit there, I'm just gonna add a little bit here. And use very light pressure because you don't want to deposit a ton of product. There, like that. Just quick, easy. Use the other side of the brush, give them a quick blend through, and you're done. For lips, I'm gonna start with the Tom Ford Lip Sculptor in 03 Deviant. Deviate, I think that's how you say it. It has this interesting like little triangular nib on it. It's an interesting pencil. It's slightly brighter and more peachy than my lip color. It's not super noticeable, but it's gonna give just enough of a kind of edge to sort with the lip color. And for the lip color, I'm be using the Hermé lipstick in number 45 Rose Ombre. And I'm just gonna take a little bit and air the center of my lip. And you can really kind of build up the amount of product in your lip because you're gonna now rub them together, use your finger to kind of smooth it out. And what you're doing is you're just kind of creating a little bit of a stained effect. 
I want to add a little bit of highlighter just to kind of where we buffed over. I want to add a little bit of luminosity back to the skin. So for this, I'm going to be using the Dior Backstage Highlight Palette. And this is in the shade 004 Rose Gold. I don't believe they have this on Sephora's website, but I did see it on the Dior website. So I'm going to use a Refer number 20 highlighting brush. And I'm going to go in with this kind of... Like, actually, you know what? I want to mix together these two shades. So the kind of light peachy color and the gold. And I'm just going to take my brush back and forth and run through both of those colors. And I'm going to add that right here to the top of my cheek. A little bit more. We're going to do the other side. And I want to take a little bit of just the kind of light peachy color. Hug right there on the brow. A little bit over the nose. Take a little bit of that over just the top of the lip. Anything left over, I'll just run over my chin. Hmm. Kind of assessing to see if I want to add anything. I feel like just right back here, I want a little bit more highlight. So what I want to do is I'm going to take my brush and kind of swirl in all four shades, tap off most of the product, and just do large buffing motions just right on this outside portion. A little bit more. And where it has this kind of so thought process is, I use these two to highlight. This color is quite similar to the blush, and this is more of like a desaturated bronzy pink. So using all four of those colors together mixed right back here, it's gonna add more of a luminosity, but it's in time with the blush and bronzer to just create a more balanced end result. You know what, I've got one more product I wanna play with. So this is another Clay to Pro product. This is the Rouge, Radiant Liquid Rouge in number 14. I don't, hmm. This looks quite pink. Yeah, looks like this. So what I wanna do with this is I'm just gonna take a little bit on the center of my lip and then kind of tap that just in the center and then to create more balance, just take whatever's left over, pat it onto the kind of round ball of the cheek. Because where I brighten up the center of the lip, I want to add that same type of brightness to the cheek. Let's take a look and see what I see. So, the skin looks really nice. So, in this mirror, like my pores, I can still, just like a fuzzy right there. I definitely can see my pores, but I'm human. I have oily skin, so that means I'm prone to enlarged pores. So seeing pores doesn't bother me because it's realistic. Um, again, my eyes look a lot more intense on camera than they do in the mirror. Let's see if I come in closer. Okay, so yeah. Up close, it's more realistic than when I'm in my normal sitting position. So you can see it's definitely like it's got more depth to it. It's got more of a smokiness to it, but it's not crazy. Um, you can see the brightness that that um, Clay de Peau lip product added in. You know, overall, I'm very, very happy with this look. Is it worth the amount of money that I spent on these products, I don't know everything. I don't know exactly how much this look cost me. So I'll add everything up and I will add that in the final check-in and we'll check in on this product. Overall though, I'm really happy. So I will see you in a few hours and we will do a checkup and finish off the video. So see you then. Hey, so I wanted to do a little check-in. It's been about 
7.30 now, so we're going on about, like, what is that, 8 hours and 15 minutes or something like that? So just over 8 hours since I first applied the Clay de Peau look, or the Clay de Peau foundation with all the other products, but mm, I did use a glowy sunscreen. This is a glowy finish foundation, and um, I'm very shiny. Like, hmm. I could deal with mattifying my nose a little bit, but other than that, I personally don't mind it. Um, where I went really sheer with like the powder products, they have pretty much faded. Um, let's check my eyes. Sorry, I'm at my desk. So lighting isn't amazing. There isn't, there's a tiny bit of creasing with the eyes and I feel like they faded a little bit, but nothing crazy. So, um, yes, here is my, we'll call this an eight hour checkup at my desk with a small little lamp lighting my face and my computer screen. But, um, so far I really like this and I'll do one last check-in before I, um, wash this off and call the night. So stay it tuned. About 1230. And I washed the makeup off so I could put on a face mask. And I'm getting to like take a shower and get ready for bed. And I'm like, oh no, I forgot to film my final check-in. So before I forgot how everything wore, I figured I would let you know what happened. Um, and even though you can't see it, you got to see my previous check-in. So just take my word. Um, everything wore really well. I might do another like full on dedicated one week or three to five day wear test for this clay to po foundation because I really enjoyed it. Only place I found that it settled today was in the right kind of corner of my nose. Um, it was only the right side. I don't know what was going on, but you know, maybe we'll give it a full foundation wear test with, you know, mixing some different primers and stuff with it. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see a full foundation wear test, let me know down below. Or if there's any other luxury products that you're curious about, let me know and I will see what I can do about getting my hands on them. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye y'all.